Hi! In today's video, we are going to go over mole relationships in chemical equations. Another fancy word for this is stoichiometry. Okay. So, in a chemical reaction, we know that we have to balance the atoms in the reactants with the atoms in the products. So as an example, let's look at the reaction between iron and sulfur. So that's going to form something called iron 3 sulfide. So Fe2S3. And when we balance this equation, we'll end up with two iron atoms reacting with three sulfur atoms to produce one iron 3 sulfide compound. So, what we can do is use those ratios 2 to 3 to 1 in calculations. Now, again, just remember that this all has to do with the law of conservation of mass. So, in a reaction, matter cannot be created or destroyed. So we're not going to see the random appearance of atoms or the random loss of atoms. So no change in total mass occurs. So the mass of the products is equal to the mass of the reactants. So um, in another example, let's say we have a reaction between silver and sulfur. And this is going to form silver sulfide. Now, when we balance this equation, we find that two atoms of silver react with one atom of sulfur to give one compound of silver sulfide. So twice the number of silver atoms react as sulfur atoms. So let's say that we measure out 215.8 grams of silver and then 32.1 grams of sulfur. And according to the law of conservation of mass, the final mass of the products should equal the sum of those two. So, in fact, we end up with 247.9 grams of silver sulfide. Okay, so just as a reminder, remember that in a reaction, mass is conserved. All right, so let's go back to our iron 3 sulfide reaction. Now, initially we were saying, okay, two atoms of iron reacts with three atoms of sulfur to produce one compound, but we could also read that as two moles of iron react with three moles of sulfur to give one mole of iron 3 sulfide. So if we have two moles of iron shown below, that's going to equal two times the mass of iron. Um, and then we have three moles of sulfur, which will equal three times the mass of sulfur. Then we'll end up with one mole of product which will equal the mass of one mole of iron three sulfide. Okay, so there's a two to three to one ratio between the reactants and the product. So now we can turn those mole ratios or mole factors into conversion factors. So for instance, let's say we're comparing iron and sulfur, our reactants. We know that there are two moles of iron that react with three moles of sulfur. And we could flip that, so we could put three moles of sulfur in the numerator and two moles of iron in the denominator. So maybe in a problem we're trying to figure out, okay, I have a certain amount of iron that I want to react. How much sulfur do I need? So we could use this conversion factor here to figure that out. 
All right, now let's say we're comparing iron with the product. So there are two moles of iron for every one mole of product. And that's, again, just coming from the coefficients up here. So we could flip that and say one mole of the product over two moles of iron. So in this instance, maybe we, again, have a certain amount of iron that we're reacting with sulfur, and we want to figure out how much of the product will form. So we could use that conversion factor. And of course, we can do the same thing between sulfur and the product. So we have three moles of sulfur, and again, one mole of the product. So we can write that as a conversion factor, or we could flip it. So maybe we start with a certain amount of sulfur and we want to figure out how much product will form. Again, we would use that conversion factor. Okay. So let's test our understanding of these conversion factors. We're going to consider a different equation where three moles of hydrogen gas reacts with one mole of nitrogen gas to produce two moles of NH3, which is ammonia. So now let's say we're comparing hydrogen and nitrogen, and we want to write a conversion factor for those. Which of the following option would represent the ratio between hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas? Is it A, B, or C? Okay, so let's go through each one. So starting with A, we have three moles of nitrogen over one mole of hydrogen. Well, that doesn't work because looking at the coefficients, it's actually the opposite. We have three moles of hydrogen and only one mole of nitrogen. So A is not correct. So let's move on to B. This one tells us we have one mole of nitrogen for every three moles of hydrogen. Okay, that checks out. Looking at the coefficients in our equation, we have three moles of hydrogen and one mole of nitrogen. So that would be our answer. Now looking at C, that one just is not correct because we have a ratio of one to two and I don't see that up here. So that's not right either. Okay, now what if we're trying to write a conversion factor between NH3, the product, and H2 gas? Is it A, B, or C? Okay, so looking at the options here, let's start with A. This one says one mole of hydrogen over two moles of ammonia. Um, okay, that's not right because we actually have three moles of hydrogen. Okay, so that's not right. All right, B, we have two moles of ammonia for every three moles of hydrogen. Okay, well, looking up above, two moles of NH3, three moles of hydrogen. So that's our answer. And then looking at C, this says three moles of nitrogen. Okay, so that's not even what we're looking for. We were trying to uh, figure out the ratio between ammonia and hydrogen, not nitrogen. So that wouldn't be right either. Okay, so these would be our conversion factors if we were comparing those specific reactants and products. All right. So now let's apply this to a problem that we might see in chemistry. So how many moles of iron three oxide can form from six moles of oxygen? And this is according to an equation where four moles of iron react with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of iron three oxide. Okay, so we're given the ratios between the reactants and the product but we're also given that we have six moles of oxygen. 
And we need to determine how many moles of the product we could form in this reaction. Okay, so maybe what we'll do is start with what we know. We have six moles of oxygen. And let's just multiply that by the ratio between the product and oxygen. Okay, so we want to end up with moles of the product. So I'm going to look up above at my equation and see that there are two moles of product. And I'm just using the abbreviated form of moles, which is M-O-L. And then for every two moles of product, we have three moles of oxygen. So that's the ratio. Okay, so now if we have six moles of oxygen, we can figure out how many moles of product would form. So again, there's a two to three ratio between the product and oxygen. All right, so we just set up our dimensional analysis and moles of oxygen will cancel. And then we can simplify this and say, okay, we have six times two divided by three. And our final uh, unit is moles of iron three oxide. Okay, so six times two is 12 divided by three is four. Oh, and I'll put a zero there. All right, so in terms of sig figs, we started out with two, and then this relationship here is exact. So we won't really count that in our sig fig determination. So at the end, we should also have two sig figs. But now we know that if we start with six moles of oxygen, we should end up with four moles of iron three oxide. And that kind of makes sense, right? Essentially, we were just doubling the uh, ratio here between oxygen and iron three oxide. Okay, and then here are the, or here's the solution slide. So now let's do another practice problem using the same equation. How many moles of iron are needed for the reaction of 12 moles of oxygen? So in this problem, we're looking at the relationship between iron and oxygen, the two reactants. So if you want to try this one on your own first, feel free to pause the video and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so in this problem, we're given 12 moles of oxygen. And we need to figure out how many moles of iron we need in order to react all of the oxygen. And this is actually a common problem in chemistry. Um, so if you are performing a reaction, let's say you have an endless supply of one of your reactants, but you only have a small amount of the other reactant. Sometimes you have to figure out, you know, how much of the other reactant do I need in order for this reaction to occur? Okay, so let's set this up. We're going to start with our given value, 12 moles of oxygen. And we're trying to figure out how many moles of iron we need. So looking up at our equation, we have four moles of iron that react with three moles of oxygen. So I'm going to put four moles of iron in the numerator because that's what we're trying to end up with, or that's our desired unit 
and then I'll put the amount of oxygen in the denominator. Okay, so according to our balanced equation, um, we have a ratio of four to three for iron and oxygen. Okay, so now if we're starting with 12 moles of oxygen, okay, how many moles of iron do we need? So moles of oxygen will cancel. And we can simplify this as 12 times four over three. And our final unit is moles of iron. Okay. So let's see, so 12 times four is 48. And then if we divide that by three, we get 16 moles of iron. Okay, so that's a lot of iron that we need in order to react with oxygen. But let's look at that ratio. So 16 over 12 for iron and oxygen. If we simplify that, we get four over three, which is the same ratio in our balanced chemical reaction. So that makes sense, right? Or hopefully. <laughs> All right, and again, in the answer, I have three sig figs because we started the problem with three sig figs. And again, this ratio between iron and oxygen is an exact ratio. So we'll just have three sig figs in the um, answer as well. Okay. And here are these solution slides if you need those later. All right, so now what we're going to do in the next section or in the next video is we're going to combine everything we've learned. So we learned how to convert from mass to moles or vice versa. We also just learned how to convert from moles of one element or compound to moles of another element or compound given a balanced equation. So now what we can do is piece that all together and we can figure out, okay, if I start with a certain amount of reactant in grams, how much of the product do I expect to form also in grams? So we'll go over that in the next video.